Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today what I want to do is look at rotation matrix in two dimensions. I'm going to start with a vector A here, um, and I want to rotate it through some angle theta to get some final vector B. And I want to describe this in terms of a rotation matrix. How do I go from vector A to vector B? Uh, this is similar to a video I did a couple months ago where um, instead of rotating the vector, I rotated the coordinate system and I wanted to link the coordinates in one uh, reference frame to the other using a rotation matrix. I'm going to put the link down in the description below for that video. Have a look at it and see how it compares. It's similar, but there are some important differences. So what we're going to do here is we're first going to do the proof. How do we link uh, vector B to vector A with a 2D rotation matrix? In the second step, what I'm going to do is we're going to apply what we've just learned uh, to two specific examples. And in the third step, I'll discuss uh, how do we um, extend this analysis to rotations in three dimensions. All right, like with all my videos, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel. It's the best way to support Physics Ninja. All right, let's get started. All right, so first thing we're going to do to analyze this problem is, again, we start here with a vector A, and I rotate it through some angle theta over here. Um, one thing I'm going to first start before writing anything down, I'm going to introduce another angle here. Let's just call it alpha. So that's the angle between the vector A and the x-axis over here. Now, in order to kind of link both of those vectors, I also want you to note one property of this rotation is that both of these vectors have to have the same length. So if I write the length as absolute values next to that vector, it has to be the same as vector B. Right, because the length of the vector is not changing, I'm only changing the orientation. So this is really, really important. This is what we call a norm conserving, or just say that the length is constant, right, or conserved. All right, so that's going to be very, very important. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to call this, since those are going to be the same, I'm just going to call it the value a. Okay, so you can go ahead and just write a if you want right on this diagram. It has to be the same. That's simply the length of this vector. All right, now what we're going to do is break the vector down into components. So both of these here have an x component. Here's the x component for uh, the a vector. I can call it ax. And I could do the same thing for the b vector. I just won't do it just because I'm going to run out of space here. Uh, both vectors also have a vertical component. Let me just go ahead and write what the vertical component of the vector a looks like. It looks like something like this. All right, now let's go ahead and write each one of these vectors in terms of its components. So the vector a I can write as ax, ay, and do the same thing for vector B. Uh, for vector B, I'm going to have, just call it BX and BY. All right, my goal now is to find what is this rotation matrix that links these components to the components of the A vector. So let's go on the next page and do a little bit more math to link both of those together. All right, so now we're going to write the components of both of these vectors in terms of the angles. So how can I do that? Well, let's look at AX. This is this component here. Again, um, the vector has a length A, and this is the angle alpha over here. So you should be able to write AX as A multiplied by cos of the angle alpha. And for AY, I should be able to write it as A multiplied by sine of the angle alpha, just using some trigonometry. All right, we could do something similar for B. And before we do B, now I'm going to define this angle here. B has an angle illustrated by this green line here. And that's the angle theta plus alpha, right? It's not just the angle theta. So you do have to be a little bit careful with that case. So how would I write B now in terms of the magnitude of the vector? The magnitude, we've just written it as A. So you would write BX and BY similarly, but you just have to make sure you um, get the right angle. Sorry, let me just correct this. Okay, so here we have uh, BY. All right, BX then would simply be uh, the magnitude of that vector, which I've listed as A, same magnitude, multiplied by cos of the angle of theta plus alpha. For the vertical component of B, uh, what you have here is A sine of theta plus alpha. 
Okay, now how do we link these components? Okay, now in order to do the next step is we have to use some trigonometry because we have to kind of simplify these terms over here. These are complicated terms because they involve two angles. But if you look this up, or if you remember it from your course in trigonometry, there are identities that allow you to split the cosine of two angles, and there's also an identity that allows you to split the sine of two angles. Now in this case, I'm adding both of those angles and the identity looks like this. It's cosine of theta, cosine of alpha. And then for a cosine, it's actually a negative sign here. And then it's um, sine of theta and sine of alpha. Now the identity for sine of two angles, how do you simplify this or split up these angles? In that case, it's a little bit different. It's sine of theta uh, cosine of alpha, and in this case, it's the same sign as the one that appears here. Um, and now for the second term, you have to just switch the angle. So it's sine of alpha and now cos of theta. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to put everything back into our expression here. For uh, here, we're going to substitute, and for this guy, we're going to substitute here. So it'll give us a more complicated expression for the x and the y components of that vector b, but we're going to see it's going to allow us to write it in matrix form, which is what we want. So let's go to the next page and continue this calculation. All right, so pretty straightforward. All we're going to do now is work with bx and by. So for bx, what I want to do is eliminate this term that I've highlighted, the cos of theta plus alpha. So you simply write a, and instead of cos, now we use this expression here. Now it has two terms, so be a little bit careful. So it's cos of theta cos of alpha then minus again you have to distribute the a the magnitude of that vector sine of theta sine of alpha uh, by you do something similar you have a now we multiply with both of these two terms so you have sine of theta cos of alpha and then plus a sine of alpha cos of theta all right, now this is where the magic happens, folks. Uh, what you have to do now is, again, looking at our expressions for B, we want to somehow introduce these components over here, the AX and the AY terms. How can we do that? Well, have a look at BX. Look at this term. Here, this is if I have A multiplied by cos of the angle alpha. Right? By definition, that is what? If I take both of those terms, right? If you multiply both of those terms, guess what you get? You get AX. How about the next guy? The next guy here, you have A multiply by sine of alpha, right? So if you combine both of those terms, by definition, that is AY. That's how we defined AY. Now you do something similar in the bottom over here. Here, look at, you have A cos of alpha again we know that this here is by definition ax and the last one a multiplied by sine of alpha um, this is the definition of a sub y the y component of that vector so guess what well that really simplifies our expression over here so what we have then is bx and by equals all right now simplify our terms so our first term here, instead of a cos of alpha, I replace all of that with ax <laughs> multiplied by, I still have cos of this angle theta. I can't get rid of that term. Then minus, um, again, just group things together. Here you have a y sine of the angle theta. And for the by terms, uh, this here simplifies to ax uh, sine of the angle theta. And then... The last term plus uh, a y cos of the angle theta. All right, we have one last step now is I can write this in matrix form here. Okay, and the way you do that here is it's our last step of the calculation. This is bx. This is by. Just write it as a vector. It's going to be equal to a 2 by 2 matrix multiplied by the vector a, ax component and a y component. If you look at this, um, these two equations over here, you should be able to write this in matrix form as cos of theta minus sine of theta, sine of theta, 
And again, the last term here is going to be cos of theta. So that's it, folks. This is our goal at the end of the day. So let's go on the next page and look at this uh, product of this matrix, a two by two matrix multiplied by this vector. And let's do a couple examples. All right, so let's have a look at our results. So we have a, our components of the B vector. They're related to the components of the A vector by this two by two matrix. Um, this is what we call the two dimensional rotation matrix. And it has these trigonometric functions here that describe the rotation. Now keep in mind the way we did this, we started at the vector A and we rotated in a counterclockwise direction. Okay, so let me just write that at the top here, counterclockwise direction for rotation. Now, if you wanted to go the other way, if you wanted to start at the vector B and then rotate, for example, in this direction, we could also do that, okay? This here would be the clockwise direction, okay? And the matrix would look very, very similar, except in that case, well, what we would do is... Let's just go ahead and write it. All we would do is simply change the sign, okay? And that's a convention. We call positive angles in the counterclockwise direction. We would simply put a negative sign in front of the angle if we started with B and rotated toward A, okay? So in that case, our rotation matrix, all you do is put minus theta. So you do cos of minus theta. Here you would do minus sine of minus theta, uh, sine of minus theta, and the last one would be cos of minus theta. Now you use some of the properties of cos and sine, and what you can do is simplify this uh, rotation matrix for clockwise rotations, okay? Um, this guy simply becomes, or these terms stay the same, cos doesn't change whether the angle is positive or negative. Uh, sine does change, so this will be sine of theta, the negative sign will pop out and this other term will be minus sine of theta. All right, so this would be for a clockwise rotation and this guy here is for counterclockwise rotations. All right, let's go ahead now and do two simple examples that allow us to practice this rotation and this matrix vector multiplication. All right, let's have a look at our first example. We have our vector A, which I've defined as one and minus two, and I wanna rotate it counterclockwise by 60 degrees. All right, so here's the vector A. It has a component here of one, that's the X component, and it has a vertical component, which is minus two right here. So how would you rotate it by 60 degrees? Again, we just used the formulation, right? I wanna find the new components, BX and BY. And what I wanna do is I want to evaluate this product. And this guy is the components of the vector A. Now what you have to do here is just substitute. I'm going counterclockwise, so I'm gonna use positive 60. So all you have to do then is just put cos of 60 minus sine of 60, sine of 60, and then cos of 60. All right, now these are kind of standard uh, trigonometric uh, functions right here. Uh, cos of 60, if you remember that one, that's one, one half. Uh, sine of 60 is root three over two. Uh, sine of 60 root 3 over 2 and cos of 60 is 1 half and now you still have to multiply this all right uh, we can find what bx and by are simply by doing this uh, vector matrix multiplication all right now it gets a little bit complicated because these terms are not going to simplify but let's just do the first one here so you're going to have a 1 half and then you're gonna have plus root three. Uh, that is the X component. Uh, you can put that in the calculator and get a number for that. That's okay. And now let's do the BY component. For BY component, if I multiply this vector by um, this matrix, we get uh, root three over two. Then here you're gonna go minus one. All right, I put those numbers in my calculator, uh, BX and BY. Uh, this gives me approximately uh, 2.23 uh, for the X component. And it gives me something a little bit uh, negative, minus 0.13. So what would that look like then on this diagram? So it means that if I rotated this guy 60 degrees, I would end up somewhere like this, a little bit bigger than two and a little bit negative like that. All right, so that here would be the vector B right here. 
And you could check that out because actually this angle here that the vector A makes relative to that X axis, if I draw this whole angle, this angle here is a little bit bigger than 60 degrees. So I don't quite get all the way to, a, um, to the X axis when I do a 60 degree rotation. Okay, uh, the other thing you can verify now is we should verify that the magnitude of the vectors are the same. So let's go ahead and do that. What is the magnitude of this A vector? So that's easy. You just take the square root and then you square both components. So it's one squared plus minus two squared. So that one's easy to evaluate. That's simply square root of five. Uh, let's do the same thing now with the magnitude of the vector B. Now this one's a little bit more <laughs> complicated because look at the components. This is the X component and this is the Y component of that vector. Right? I didn't choose the best numbers to do this, but that's okay, that's life. So here's the magnitude of the vector B. Again, you take the square root and there's going to be two terms. So this is one half plus root three. I have to square that and then plus square root of three over two minus one and you have to square that term. So now we have to evaluate this mess right here. So let's go ahead and do that. Square root. Um, so this is going to be one fourth plus, you multiply those and then plus two, uh, multiply by two, that's root three, and then plus three. Now plus, uh, now this term over here, this is going to be three over four. If I, again, I expand this uh, squared term. Uh, the next term here is going to be minus uh, root three and then the last term here is just going to be plus one so there's six terms here when I expand all of those square terms uh, you can see some of them cancel out this is kind of nice uh, one fourth can add to three fourths to give me one and then you have three and then you have one and then another one so guess what you're going to get at the end Thank goodness, we also get root five. So although they look complicated, the components, the magnitude of this vector is simply square root of five. Okay, that's the length of the vector. It hasn't changed before the rotation and after the rotation. Okay, so that's example one. All right, example two, we have the vector A, which is defined or has components two and three. So if I go ahead and sketch that, uh, two is the X axis and three, here's the vertical axis. So it looks something like this. It's in the first quadrant. I wanna rotate it now clockwise. So let's be a little bit careful and rotate it by 90 degrees. So uh, first thing I remember that if I'm going to use my rotation matrix the way I have it here and I'm going clockwise, Remember, what I have to do is I have to substitute 90 degrees, right? If I'm going to do that because of the clockwise direction. So we're going to go ahead and write this down then. So we have BX and BY. This is a pretty straightforward example. Let me write the vector A here, which has components 2 and 3. And now what I do is I simply do cos of minus 90 degrees. And I do minus sine of minus 90 degrees uh, sine of minus 90 degrees and then the last one cos of minus 90 degrees uh, you can simplify this rotation matrix quite a bit if you are familiar with your trigonometric functions cos of positive 90 or cos of negative 90 is zero so that's an easy one sine of uh, negative 90 uh, gives me minus one and then with another one here this gives me one and this guy here is going to be minus one all right then i still have to multiply by the vector a all right and the last bit this is an easy multiplication all you end up doing here is doing three and then if you multiply this vector by um, this matrix the y component will be minus two okay um, let's go ahead and draw what that vector looks like again this is just the sketch so it has a component, an X component of three, and it has a vertical component of minus two, something like this. So this here would be the vector B. Now it's very easy to verify that the components are clearly going to be the same, right? So the magnitude, sorry, are going to be the same. So that you can easily verify. Um, it takes two seconds to do because they're both simply going to be square root of two squared plus three squared. What does that give me? Nine plus four square root of uh, 13. 
Okay, that is example two. All right, so pretty straightforward. All right, the last thing I wanted to mention is, well, just kind of a brief case for talking about three dimensions here. So we have a transformation for two-dimensional vectors. But remember, I mean, even this case, you can extend to the third dimension because although this is the x-axis, the y-axis, the z-axis here is actually just coming out of the page. So really what we've done is we've described a rotation of the vector A about this axis, about the z-axis, right? And rotating it in the counterclockwise direction. So it just happens that both of these vectors, A and B, simply don't have a z component, right? Or their z component hasn't changed. But if you wanted to expand this to three dimensions, at least rotating it about this z-axis, well, again, imagine our vectors have three components uh, we now have to have a three by three matrix and again a x a y and a z now since we don't want to change the oops the last thing here is not this is should be b sub z all right the last thing we want to do now is again if we're rotating it about the z axis um, this part is going to be the exact same right i don't want to change any of that and I also don't want to change uh, the Z component. I don't want to be introducing a Z component to the X and Y's here because that's not what we're doing. We're simply making a rotation about this axis. So this is what the transformation looks like if you extend this to at least this specific case to the Z axis. Again, I don't want now to change the Z component. That's going to be the same. Um, so you simply have a number one that goes here. Okay, now you can also set up matrices for rotation about the X axis or about the Y axis. They are going to look very, very similar to this guy. Okay, now the one is going to be at a different position. These cosines and negative signs are also going to be in different uh, positions, but I'm going to leave that for another video because it's going to take me too much time for this case. But this is just kind of an introduction on how you would extend some of this analysis to the third dimension, okay? At least for a rotation along the z axis. All right, thanks for watching, folks. Hopefully, you understood this video. See you next time.